Hi everybody and welcome to session 10 of the Internet Video 101 training. This is our final session. I bet you're surprised how quickly we've got through it all. And tonight we're talking about the last step in the process, which is video distribution. So, specifically what we're going to talk about is making our videos ready for distribution. You may have already seen the, the um, output of your homework last week was probably quite a large file. You wouldn't want to have to upload that over your internet connection. We're going to talk about where to upload our videos. And then we're going to talk about some options that we have for distributing our videos automatically. And uh, we'll talk about when and where you do that a little bit later on. So the first step is we need to prepare our videos. Now, when we created them, I suggested that you create them in um, a .mov format. And what we've got really is a really high quality uh, video with, as I say, quite a large file size. Um, if we look at the one that I made last week, and if I go here to the movie inspector, we can see that my uh, video, even though it's only 5 minutes and 56 seconds long, is actually half a gigabyte in size. Uh, that's huge. So we don't want to be dealing with that sort of file sizes when we're distributing on the internet. So what we need to do, if you think back to um, the first few sessions, we need to be getting our files converted to MP4. Um, and we need to be compressing them down, not necessarily changing the size, uh, the, the physical dimensions, but getting that file size down as far as we can without losing any quality. And the best tool that I've found to do this is QuickTime Pro. Now you've probably come across QuickTime anyway. Um, it, it, it's it, it installed by default if you install iTunes. Um, a lot of uh, applications out there will use QuickTime. But there is a Pro upgrade option, and it's not expensive. Um, and what it does is it converts your standard QuickTime into this Pro Edition, which gives you a lot more functionality. So as well as being able to play things, you can also export things and convert things. And it can be a very, very versatile tool, and something that I would not want to be without. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our video up in QuickTime Pro, and I'm going to demonstrate this to you shortly. Um, but going through the steps, the first thing we want to do is go to the file menu and click on export. When we do that, it'll open up another menu um, asking us to save the file. Now, the first thing we need to make sure is that we've got it set to um, movie to MPEG-4. So that's the actual type of the export that it's going to do for us. But we don't want to just take the defaults. We want to have some control over how this gets exported. And we do that by clicking the Options button. So when we click that, we get this window opening up. Now then, there are um, a few things here to note. First thing is, at the top, we've selected MP4. But then under video format here, we need to make sure that we select H.264. And there are some similar sounding ones. They're all wrong. It's the H.264 one that we need. Okay? Once we've done that, we want to set our size. Um, I normally use custom and then put in here my 1280 by 720, which if you remember is my HD format. Then I will, um, I'll take the, the current frame rate, and once I've set those things, I will click on Video Options. And this brings up my H.264 video options here. So, by default, we'll have this one selected, Faster Encode. We don't want that, we want better quality. It takes quite a bit longer to process the video, but it's worth it. Once you've done this and you click OK, you'll then be able to say optimized for CD, DVD, ROM. Okay, by default, this here will say download, and we don't want that. We want CD, DVD, ROM. 
but you can't change that until you've selected best quality. The final thing is we talked again many weeks ago now about data rate. Because we're going to be uploading to YouTube in our case, I've set this to 1500. 1500 is very high. However, YouTube will take the video at the biggest quality we give it and it will convert it down to different sizes and different bandwidths. But it needs a, a really good data rate in order to do that without um, sacrificing quality. Now if I was going to be just uploading this to my website, I would probably choose quite a bit smaller number there, maybe something like about five or six hundred. But what I suggest you do is you, you pick a number, let's say you pick a thousand, and you export the file. Once you've done that, you have a look at it. If the quality is still really good, go back and try another number. Maybe you try 500 and have a look at it. And you'll find a point that suddenly the quality will degrade really badly. And it will be obvious. And at that point, you go up and you bump it up a little. And you'll find a point where there's no perceptible loss of quality, but you'll get a significantly smaller um, file size, simply because of this data rate. So the other thing that we need to do, if I just go back a second there, where we had video here, if we click on, on that drop-down box, we can select audio, and that gives us this window here. Just make sure that this, the settings look something like this. Uh, we want the audio format to be AAC, we want uh, the data rate to be 128 kilobits per second, stereo 44.1 kilohertz and that's basically CD quality. Okay. Once you've done all of that, click OK and you can actually export the file. So let's have a look at us doing this now. So this is my um, my video as it stands at the moment. Uh, as you can see the quality is quite high if I just play it for a second. Picture yourself 12 months from now entertaining a group of your friends around the piano. I mean, no surprise, we've, we've rendered it as a high definition image and we've got really crisp quality here. So if I wanted to export this and um, I will be using this to upload to YouTube. So I'll go to the file menu, export, um, give it the name .mp4, see I've got movie to mpeg4 a lot of options here but I specifically want the MPEG-4 version. I'll then go into options and if you see here we want to make sure it's MP4 not this ISMA one, we want MP4. Then we want H.264 here, okay, not any of the others, it wants to be H.264. We then want to set the size and uh, we could use just the default one if we want to, or we could set it to custom at the bottom there. So I'll take the default of this uh, preset one. Frame rate, I'll use whatever frame rate we've got. And you notice here, this is set to download. I can't do anything about it. Uh, so I click on video options. By default, it says um, faster encode. I don't want that. I want best quality. So I'll click on OK. Now, I can change the quality to CD and DVD-ROM quality. However, at this data rate, 256 kilobits per second, this quality is going to be appalling. So because I'm uploading it to YouTube, I'll put 1500 in there. And you can see at the bottom the difference it, it makes. So the approximate file size will be about um, 72 megabytes. At the default of 256, it will be 17 megabytes. So it does make a big difference, but in this case, I don't want to sacrifice the quality. So 1500, click OK, and then literally just click the Save button. Um, now this actually takes quite a while, so I'm not going to do it now. I, I, I rendered this um, before I started recording, so we'll come back to that shortly.